chess friends and welcome to the adult chess channel and welcome back to our queen's game decline series so in this series we're following this very nice opening from white and from black perspective and today we continue with our queen's game decline studies and the so-called albin counter gambit the albin counter gambit we have started recently first we have seen some beautiful traps that are possible but recently we have started the series how to beat uh, the albin counter gambit because in my opinion still the albin counter gambit is something that you should try to avoid uh, because many times we have seen even some better defenses like the Tata defense you can also play the ragos and you can play many many beautiful defenses against d4 in my opinion as i said the alban counter gambit you should not play so that's why in the continuation of our series we'll see now um the only way how to beat um, uh, the alban counter gambit because there are many many beautiful ways and there are of course many responses for black so that's why we want to cover every of them and then we have i think again decent preparation against these types of structures so let's see now a uh, new variation many times your opponent will go into to the so-called balog variation the balog variation is a move queen to e7 uh, then uh, your opponent is trying to recapture the pawn on e5 uh, by playing with the move queen to e7 there are many many great things and there are many good ideas for black but still i think uh, this is the passive move the problem about the move queen to e7 is that uh, the queen is taking the natural square for the bishop so as i said i will explain you what's all about what are the good parts about the ballot variation but also what is the problem then for black and how white should counter play this types of ideas so let's check out now what is the ballot variation of the albin counter game so we have here d4 uh, d5 uh, we have studied many uh, important lines so far so please if you're interested more into the albin counter game please check out our series from the beginning part one part two and so on in order to get a better understanding what's going on now also in this video so after move c4 your opponent can play of course the albin counter gambit with the move e5 so we have d takes e5 we have now the normal move d4 your opponent is trying this expansion on your side of the board is trying to fix the pawn structure around the squares d4 will try knight to c6 bishop to c5 maybe to rely simply on his active pawn here on d4 and uh, is trying to get more space in the center so also what black is of course trying is then to with queen to e7 or similar stuff or maybe with knight to c6 knight to e7 knight to g6 also to recapture your space advantage by simply taking the pawn on e5 so my recommendation is still to go with the normal knight to f3 we have knight to c6 and now again i'm suggesting you to play the so-called alapin variation of the albin counter gambit we have studied um, the alapin variation yesterday as a good method to beat the albin counter gambit now your opponent can go after this move into the so-called balog variation with the move queen to e7 and as i said this is a normal idea nothing wrong with this move because your opponent is trying to recapture the pawn knight to e5 knight to e5 queen to e5 and similar stuff and he's trying many times don't forget about this uh he's trying many times to play somewhere with the bishop bishop to g4 bishop to f5 bishop to e6 doesn't matter but he's trying many times to castle queens i don't forget about this because he has here a lack of development it's very hard for black to develop this minor pieces you see knight to h6 maybe can be met with bishop takes h6 messing up the pawn structure even if black tries to develop with uh, g6 and bishop to g7 then also in some occasions bishop to g5 uh, could be dangerous so black could face many many dark square problems so that's why many many in many occasions black will simply castle queen side not king side so that's why this move queen to e7 is a preparation of course to take the pawn but also it's a preparation to castle queen side in a fast way so that's why you have to be careful you know have to know what you're doing here so that's why g3 we're playing normal development we don't rush into things because even if your opponent takes now knight takes e5 it doesn't matter it leads now into a simplified line that favors white i think knight to e5 is something that black doesn't want to get although it's probably even the suggested line by top engines but this is perfectly fine for white because we can play knight to e5 knight to e5 and now knight to f3 wins the pawn uh whatever you do queen to c5 queen to d4 and we have now a simplified game we're going into an end game and this is perfectly fine we we don't have worries i think even if your opponent tries something like i don't know queen to a4 uh, a5 attacking um, uh, the king bishop to d2 solves again all of our positional problems bishop to b4 we can take the pawn doesn't matter and now after normal development we can play even knight to b3 really force finally uh, trades of bishop so here bishop to d2 queen to d2 queen to d2 maybe knight to d2 and you can be the judge of this position white is up a pawn and has now i think a uh, winning position so that's why uh, this simplification idea of the, the balog variation 
um, is not working so it's uh, the main goal but actually your main goal becomes your main problem because the game becomes more and more simplified and that's something that you don't want to get so uh, here in the continuation after move uh, queen to e7 and g3 uh, many times you see this line bishop to g4 and this is um, preparation to play knight to e5 uh after knight to e5 queen to e5 and then d3 because there are many many uh attacking opportunities here on this diagonal the queen is a little bit pinned so many times you see also d3 queen side castling and then d3 as the main attacking goal but also one different goal that black as an uh, as an attack here is h5 h4 because with the move g3 you play the fianchetto you already slightly have weakened your pawn structure we have to say that now with h5 h4 your opponent is trying to create further mess after you castle maybe bishop to g to kingside castling and then black is trying many times uh, to launch a flank attack so you should not be surprised by this so uh, as i said d3 and h4 h5 are now main attacking themes here for black but still don't worry you're still better here if you know what you're doing black doesn't gain anything so here after move bishop to g4 you just play a calm game bishop to g2 king queenside castling can be of course the move and now we can still kingside castling so here knight to e5 we can simply take knight to e5 and after um, queen to e5 we can notice now okay your opponent has finally grabbed the pawn and your opponent is relying on his uh, pawn on d4 and it seems so that black has solved now all of the position problems but it's ex exactly what is not true because uh, here after move queen to b3 uh, now we're on the attacking side and we can now attack the b7 weakness and it's really really hard uh, for um for black to defend this position in this particular position i found really a beautiful gameplay by uh, uh by yingji against lee hanbin so by yingji uh now these days he's a grandmaster in chess uh, back when he played the game he was a feed master so but still really really instructive game because here by yingji didn't play any inaccuracies mistakes or blunders his game was almost perfect here so this is really a cornerstone game that you can use in order to beat uh the balog variation of the uh of the albin contra gambit here after move queen to b3 okay we are a little bit here weak around the square etu but this is now the clear target that forces now this move c6 and that's exactly what we want to get we want to create at least some kind of a weakness structural weakness in front of black scene now with the move c6 you notice now that bishop to f4 will be very very dangerous will cut off uh here the potential king's uh, king's activity to escape here on b8 and then on a8 so that's why here um by yingji played the beautiful move uh, we have um uh, uh knight to uh f3 we have queen to c5 uh here we have rook to d1 continue the pressure around the square d4 and now bishop to e6 and it seems so that black has defended this position that this is perfectly fine because uh, now the c4 is uh, hanging here but here uh by ying you played i think a beautiful move bishop to f4 slow down the, the pace of black's attack because whatever you do even if you try i don't know bishop to c4 we can play queen to a4 now you could try maybe a6 to prevent this a uh, bishop uh, queen to a7 ideas but now with rook to c1 look at this beautiful attacking formation now uh black will lose uh, probably the battle uh here on the uh on the c file also in many occasions bishop to h3 is also very very dangerous for instance if you try queen to c4 here then we can play queen to c4 bishop to c4 knight to d4 and even if you try i don't know something like uh uh c5 then look at this bishop to h3 really really amazing stuff these bishops are aiming towards the king and uh, the king is dead here you have to cover with the bishop but now with knight to e6 bishop to e6 again you lose the game tactically so um when we force this is very important let's go back i think this is a crucial moment c6 we have at least provoked some weaknesses in front of black's king even b6 is not working of course because now look at this this is even worse here we can sneak in with the queen here on life course again uh, black is tactically losing the game so this is something that we want to get especially in these types of structures because now uh, we have provoked some weaknesses and look at this this is a lack of development here your opponent didn't play so far okay he will probably try h5 h4 to open the position somehow but it's simply too slow uh, so that's why here by yingji as we said played knight to f3 beautiful move we have queen to c5 rook to d1 bishop to e6 and now bishop to f4 so he played really a beautiful attacking formation so we have now b5 and again it seems so that something went wrong but here again rook to uh, rook to c1 even if you try i don't know something like bishop to c4 we'll play queen to c2 and now b3 again opens the c file look how naked uh, 
black's king is again bishop to h3 is an opportunity so many many dirty ideas uh, are here possible for white of course we, i cannot just sh show you what happens if that happens but here i think we can agree that white is dominating the position so uh here after move rook from a to c1 uh, by yingji's opponent right f6 uh here we have um, a queen to c2 we have now b takes c4 finally but now the queen comes very active into the game we have queen to uh, b4 and you see now the a7 is weak so again with the support of the bishop we're threatening even checkmate we had queen to b7 queen takes b7 and now knight to d4 uh in this position black resign because even if you try bishop to d5 then you have a beautiful tactical shot here knight to c6 if you take of course first the bishop then first check on uh on uh, on d8 and then we take out the bishop if you take uh here the uh, with the king then you have this one uh rook to c4 really really stunning tactic again it's game over so as i said uh many many beautiful ideas but the key is to provoke this weakness on c6 that's why um, i love to really this game you can really use this game it will be in the description below the whole bgn you can maybe analyze but this should be really your cornerstone of these types of ideas so let's see now different ideas for black uh that can happen in the ball variation of the albin counter game so again uh, queen to e7 we play g3 normal stuff we have now again the move f6 this is now the uh, 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 an early f6 you see many times this idea black is giving up a pawn just in order to develop the knight with the tempo and this idea is probably much much better instead of this bishop to g4 that we have seen because uh, black has to develop finally the minor pieces here after move f6 uh, e takes f6 knight to f6 bishop to g2 so again normal development and many times you face this idea d3 you should not worry nothing went wrong although this is an annoying pawn and probably uh, you will not tolerate it through the whole game but so far we have to play a calm game you have to be uh, no you have to know what you're doing here now first of all e3 and now if we move bishop to g4 again we should first secure the king by calcing and now many times you get queenside calcing now comes the critical moment of the game you can play now many things you, every move i think is perfectly fine rook to b1 uh with b4 or h3 to finally kick away the bishop so we have to get rid of this bishop we don't want to have it here because as we said it's a little bit annoying to have uh this bishop against the queen because um, black has already provoked the e3 move but now in my opinion you have to memorize this position you have now brilliant move that i think uh meets with the idea of opposite side attack games what i mean about opposite side attack games is that our king is on the king side our opponent's king is on the queen side so many times we're trying to launch flank attacks against uh, your opponent's king so from black perspective h5 h4 and similar stuff from white perspective b4 b5 and similar stuff but in this position you can actually go immediately b4 in my opinion b4 is crucial here again uh, like in this previous position when when we forced the c6 weakens now i think b4 you have to play you will not lose maybe the game if you play rook to b1 slightly more passive move uh then probably h4 will happen uh, h5 h4 will happen and notice that many times your opponent will try h4 and then he will even sacrifice the rook probably in one uh, moment rook to h4 then after g takes h4 maybe with queen to e6 he could sneak in here on life force include both of these knights into the game somehow so it could be maybe a dangerous position the evaluation is probably here many times uh, in white's favor that's not the point but uh, believe me i've lost many games when i had even a plus two evaluation from white's perspective in the album counter game because i really missed some tactics so black has many times uh good good attacking formation sort of and if you are not tactically good like i'm not so you could as i said many times lose the game even if you have much much better position i've seen in the album counter game games that were lost plus five so even if even that is possible so that's why i love this move b4 uh, uh, that i've studied at home b4 is really aggressive because whatever black does now if he takes with the queen uh with queen to b4 then we can play immediately rook to b1 and we're now on the attacking side we have given up a pawn but we have now a really beautiful attack and memorize this this is one of the good methods i think in order to beat the ball your opponent can try uh queen to a5 but now with h3 we're kicking away the bishop your opponent could uh, maybe try to take but now with queen to f3 look at this we have now brilliant brilliant attacking formation rook to b7 is even a threat then we can take out uh here the knight with the tempo so this is also a tactic that could work so your opponent could take also with the knight 
knight to b4 and now we can also play queen to b3 and then we could have a comfortable game your opponent if he retreats then many times this idea is working the most important thing in this scenario is that we get rid of this uh, very annoying pin now knight to d4 again comes with a beautiful tempo uh, uh now again this idea around the b square b7 is the main tactical goal so your opponent could try to battle with uh, the knight to a5 but now we can take out this annoying pawn finally on d3 and i think the game is strategically over even if your opponent tries c5 maybe to pin you then we have this one queen to uh queen to a3 attacking the knight and now again if he wants to take we can also take this pawn is weak so again a much much better position here for one so this is uh i think a very important moment to recognize when your opponent castles and has played already this d3 idea then b4 is perfectly fine you can be the judge of this position please check it out also with some engines if you like b4 in my opinion really really a great method you have to open some files now uh, we're threatening immediately uh, some ideas of b5 we are threatening uh, here to play a4 a5 but notice that we are faster that's the beauty about this move we are faster in the attack because um, black will probably play in the future if you play slightly passive moves black will play h5 h4 will try to open the position although as i mentioned probably in many of the sidelines in many variations you are the one that has a better computer relations but we should not always watch computer relations you have also sometimes your intuition you have sometimes also your feeling about certain positions i think with the move b4 we can really let this position explode and uh, activate all of our pieces which is very very important because this is what we don't like this uh, 19 standing in the way on the bishop uh, it's simply too slow sometimes to develop the dark square bishop with the move b for i think you can solve all of our position problems so let's see now a different example uh queen g7 again g again this idea f6 you'll see probably many times this idea uh we have uh, e takes f6 knight to f6 again bishop to g2 again this idea d3 uh e3 and now bishop to g4 now you can also tr try h3 if you don't want to castle immediately so if you don't uh, feel secure if you don't want to um uh security can king like cats if you want the clarification with the bishop now your opponent will probably try to play the move bishop to h5 and i found really a beautiful game played by shimon yalov uh against volker leopold uh here the cool part is that the international master really destroyed the grandmaster uh in uh, in the albin counter gambit here with the white pieces now we can also castle again we have this idea uh, kingside castle again we have to play this move b4 and i think again b4 is perfectly fine uh uh, although here in this game white prepared a little bit more uh this b4 but again with the idea uh knight to b4 then we can play again play queen to uh queen to b3 and similar stuff if the queen takes again uh then of course we have this uh this idea to play rook to uh, rook to b1 and then uh to open here uh the b file so that's why uh okay rook to b1 was uh played in this game but doesn't matter still uh, white has a good good game i wanted to show this beauty because it's really really a nice tactical game so we have here knight to e4 we have queen to a Four. again uh trying to mess up a little bit the position here on life course we have now knight to c5 queen to a3 and here after move knight to a6 we have again the same motif sort of with the move b4 this is really beautiful because okay we didn't play the move b4 sacrifice immediately but again i'm pointing out that the b4 motif is something that you have to study against these types of ideas again we have a sacrifice that opens simply the position knight to b4 again knight to d4 trying to deflect this knight uh, here in the continuation we have bishop to e2 uh, now by by black but it doesn't matter because we're continuing the pressure here on life force because if you take the uh, bishop to f1 like uh, uh, black did in this game we have knight to f1 and notice now if you take here knight takes d4 then of course we have e takes d4 and now i'm not seeing a good way how it should escape uh here with your with your knight because the serious serious threat is now a3 and then then you lose again the battle uh here on on b7 even if you try again some ideas of c6 and similar stuff notice that also the bishop can always come into the game so here after move knight to f1 we had the uh, rook to d4 so black tried to sacrifice the piece back we have e takes d4 queen to e1 and now king to h2 getting out of this mess of uh on the, on the first rank we're trying now uh, to include now the bishop into the game we have queen to f2 now c5 this was really really a beautiful move because uh it's cutting off the connection between the bishop and the knight and now we have bishop to e7 and now rook takes b4 knight to b4 and here 
queen to a7 was even the possibility although probably even this idea is working because uh, we can still uh, battle here for the b7 so but okay queen to a7 is also a beautiful threat to take out the rook on uh, on h8 so we have here king to d7 now we have a new check uh here we have uh, knight to c6 d5 look at this how easy this attack is now for for white we have queen to c5 we have bishop to e3 now look at this every move is simply attacking move here by by white we have uh, queen to c2 we have finally uh, d takes c6 bishop uh, b takes c6 and now queen to g4 so the king is really really naked here many many tactical ideas are working here for white so queen, king to d8 now we can take out this pawn uh, here white also took out this pawn and uh, eventually after queen to uh, e4 there's nothing that uh, can be done the bishop is protected probably black hope for a tactic rook takes f1 and followed with queen to e3 and similar ideas but this is simply not working so here we have rook to f6 we have a knight to d2 look how uh, white is connecting the pieces the pieces are really glued together every piece is protecting another piece uh after knight to d2 rook to g6 bishop to f4 look at this uh, really nice uh, formation we are forcing now a trace of queens queen to c5 another problem king to h2 and in this position uh, um, uh black resign so as i said this was also i think a beautiful tactical game this game will be also uh in the description below so you can maybe also analyze it in this game white uh, played almost like the stock for changing uh i've pointed this game out because it had also this beautiful b4 motif uh in which you sacrifice one pawn just in order uh, to let uh let the pieces roll to open some files to open some diagonals to create weaknesses in your opponent's position especially the b7 is our main target so okay i hope that you like this method so let's go back after move e5 uh the main goal is d takes e5 then d4 knight to f3 and then knight to d2 going into the alapin we have talked about the alapin yesterday uh, this was our method how to beat the alpine counter game and now after move queen to e7 now we go g3 f6 doesn't matter we simply take and then bishop to g2 uh then afterwards uh with e3 kingside casting and then we have seen b4 b5 was the serious threat to sacrifice just some material and open some files and open some diagonals so this is a method you can use it you can maybe try something else in my opinion it's simply one of the best ways to beat the Albin counter gambit i can guarantee you if you don't find any weapon against the Albin, you can get destroyed i've lost as i said many many games um uh, even if i had maybe a plus two evaluation even if i had better evaluations but the computer evaluations believe me are not so important here it's very important to understand what's going on and how we should counterplay black's idea so okay i hope that you enjoy the study um, i think this is very very important because you meet these ideas many many times if you want to see more about the album counter game please check out our studies before first we have seen the lasker trap we have seen also mistakes by white and black that are possible and uh, if you want to see the whole queen's game decline series please check out our queen's game decline series from the beginning where we have studied the harvest attack uh, taras defense semi taras defense and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course